Hey, welcome to the living room. Uh, this is uh, season one, episode seven, where we discuss real topics. We have real conversations with real people. On today's topic, we're going to be speaking about student loans. I know that is a very, very big issue going on um, in the world right now, especially with COVID-19 going on. But even before um, COVID-19, student loans have always been an issue with high education costs, uh, why interest rates are so high, and why other uh, countries overseas get better you know, treatment of student loans versus us in America. So I wanted to see what you guys all thought about, you know, our current affair of student loans, why, you know, all these banks and airlines, and all these fraudulent other companies getting all these bailout monies, but we're not bailing out the people. So I want to see what you guys thought about that. Right. I, and I can speak on that because I, um, I survived several student loans uh, from undergrad all the way to law school. So we have to look at our system in America. We have a capitalist system. And in America, capitalism runs everything. The student loan debt was approximately $1.6 trillion in 2019, which was about 7.5% of the 2019 gross domestic product, the GDP. So that's a huge portion of our gross domestic product. So federal student aid, the portfolio, uh, according to our, the Secretary of Education, is nearly 10% of the national debt. So it's about economics. And we'll also look in, in a minute when we continue the discussion of, at the default rates. But what it is, is these are banks and large institutions that are making money off of average citizens, all of the work, everyday working families, middle class and working class and the poor class. And I want to show y'all something, and I'm glad you spoke about that. And we'll definitely need those references as well. Uh, yeah. I'm going to share something with you guys because um, there was something that was bothering me when I was looking at things. And I'm just like, America needs, we need, we need to figure out something fast. Because um, I said right now, it's just not working the way we're currently doing it. So um, I looked at um, student uh, loans COVID-19 relief. And I know that the Democrats were trying to um, get uh, at least around thirty to fifty thousand dollars taken off of everybody's student loan debt, which is a great thing to do. If we can bail out banks for billions of dollars, and we can bail out these airlines and car companies, why can't we bail out these people? These airlines, and these companies make so much money off the people, and they pay you guys pennies on the dollar. But when they're these big corporations are filing bankruptcy and stuff, they're paying their CEOs thirty-three million and twenty-five million. I'm like, well. If you guys are bankrupt, you don't have no money, how did you find the money to pay him? That's what I was going to say, too. And right before you show this, um, I wanted to touch on um, Kwame's point. And you, he was saying that it's cap uh, capitalism is a capitalist country, but doesn't it become socialism when we're uh, giving out money to these corporations, but not, you know, giving out the money? Well, socialism, socialism for, the, for corporations, but not for you know, individuals or the, the people for the United States, Americans who have been spending all this money, getting high interest rates, never getting out of student debt because of all these uh, student debts, we're getting into more debt with other banks and paying them other interest rates so that we can, um, you know, lower our interest rates for what we're receiving as a student loan. So it's kind of a, I mean, is it, are we really a capitalist country or are we just a socialist country? Or are we trying to take advantage of, you know, uh, you know, um, people, the people, individuals, people who are the, the working class. I mean, I think we're, I think we're more of a greedy company. Uh, well, I, that's why I say company, not country, company. Um, because <laughs> that's, well, that's how this country is ran. I said, literally, you know, you can get uh, any Jeff Bezos or uh, Mark Zuckerberg to, to donate money to a to one of their politicians, and then they get their way. You know, and it's nothing against them. It's just the way our system is ran. So another thing that got me, I'm like, okay, well. If the way of uh, Republicans were sitting there saying, and some people that I know, well, well, we have to pay for our student loans and we have to do this and, you know, everybody else don't get bailouts. I said, but all these big corporations are getting bailouts. Like these people are rich. They're getting money on top of money. So they don't have to worry about student loans because pretty much in my eyes, we're, they're, these large corporations are defrauding people. They're getting all this money, bailouts from their taxpayer dollars, but you can't get back to the people. That's one thing that's bothering me. And so when I look at the 2008 crisis of the history of the U.S. government bailouts, these are all big companies, Lockheed Martin, Franklin National Bank, New York Bank, Chrysler, uh, Continental Bank, Savings and Loans, 
of the airline industry, Bern Stern, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all these these companies right here, some that were involved in the 2008 uh, scandal and crisis where hardly anybody got put in prison. This is why I tell people like this whole, this word called reputation, um, I, I take that very loose, uh, I, I take that with a grain of salt because reputations to me um, don't really matter. It's, it matters about what you're doing for, for us now because I see a lot of these big companies and banks saying, oh, they're reputable. But I'm like, well, weren't they involved in this scandal in 2008? I said, so for me, that's not a reputation. That's something. Most recently, Wells Fargo, and they're trying to mask what they're wrongdoing by reaching out to the community and creating more affordable loans for um, lower income families or, mm -hmm. you know, or black and brown people. So it's just, it's, it, they're masking something so that we forget. And I think that's also our fault for forgetting. Oh, they're like, oh, they're doing this. They're giving us a little piece of bread. And we're over here running and making line for it. Instead mm -hmm. of really standing our ground and be like, no, y'all, you guys did all this. You guys were stealing. Do not get reprimanded. I'm not going to purchase from you. And this is another thing. Look at look at how much we out of that uh, two thousand the two trillion stimulus. Look at this money. American Airlines, five <clears throat> billion dollars. Delta, five billion. They have assets that they could have liquidated, so all of this stuff. But they're being bailed out by the people. So, and I'm looking at this like uh, uh, this is what really got me with the Paycheck Protection Program. Ruth, Chris, and we talked about them on our show before. But twenty million dollars for a luxury restaurant train. I just, I'm just, it's not processing. Jay Alexander's is another luxury restaurant. Yes, <laughs> the restaurant was pot belly. All these companies right here was paying dollars and 38 cents and 215 and minimum wage. They're getting billions and billions and millions of dollars. And I'm just like, I, I, I want to see what you guys really, really thought about this because this is a huge problem right now. See, but the, but the reality is education is something that is, that, that is, um, something that, that, that will continue to, people, people wanting to better themselves. You know, in, in a traditional world, everyone wants to go to college, get a degree, a bachelor's degree, et cetera. So with them fixing that problem, it, again, they're fixing the problem. Their goal is to not fix the problem because they want to continuously have people pay student loans for the rest of their lives. You know what I'm saying? If you figure out a way to fix the problem, there's no longer a problem. There's no longer that income coming in. So with that being said, I don't even think they're interested in fixing the problem. You know or, what I mean? Or else I guess that also begs the question, do they want to keep us uneducated? Because people who have less resources uh, cannot, they don't want, they, you know, they don't want to uh, be in debt in the long term. They can't apply for grants. They, you know, there's, there's less resources for, you know, communities of brown and blacks, quite frankly, especially it's really noticeable here in LA where you can't really access, you know, education. And just recently, uh, there has been a, um, it talked about uh, getting rid of the SATs and the, uh, the ACT in order to get accepted into college and uh, here in, in California. And, um, and, and, and that's actually, uh, we're praising that because a lot of people who don't have the resources to get tutoring for uh, how to take the SAT and ACT weren't getting into colleges because the, the universities were looking mainly at that. So now they're, you know, they're kind of changing that system. Um, but that's all to say is, do they really, they, they don't want to change the problem, and I agree with you, but because they don't want to have us have knowledge and be educated, I think. It's right, and when we look at uh, the economics of it, the, the top 1%, 1% of the world's population holds about 50% of the wealth. So we have rules and regulations and policies and laws that are help or that are put in place to maintain one white privilege and two to subjugate minorities. So if we look at our education system, education should be a right. It should be a right. So we have education K through 12, which we know has its own problems in poor and in minority areas. And now we look at the, the, the college level. Now you have people that are graduating on average. I think the average American is graduating with $37,000 in debt. And there are about 45 million dollars, 45 million Americans with student loan debt. So again, that goes back to the capitalism part, is that it's, it's, it's making money, but the socialism part is who is it making money for? Socialism mm -hmm. is a negative word when it comes to conservatives, but the conservatives also use the system and get those social welfare benefits for themselves. That's right. So the, the system, again, it has to be changed. And I, I believe that the, we have to, to, to redefine our gross domestic product and, and the government spending, and we need to make sure that, uh, that education is free for everyone at least public education.
That's right. Anybody have anything else to say right now? I agree. <laughs> yeah, one other thing. Um, this is a, a statistic I'll send to you. This is on the default rates, uh, especially for minorities. The National Center for Education F Statistics. So this is going to be a site that I'm going to send you from them. The National Center for Education Statistics reported that the 12-year student loan default rate for African Americans going to for-profit colleges was 65%, 65.7%. So again, you have a, a system that's balanced against us where even when we're graduating or going to these colleges and for-profit universities, we're still graduating with so much debt, we're not gonna be able to get ahead. So we can't function on the same level. Let's say you have a Caucasian that only has a high school degree, but they don't, they're not carrying this type of debt and they have this, general, this generational uh, income and wealth that they're carrying. We're graduating. We're not inheriting in property. Uh, we didn't inherit our grandparents' property, et cetera. So we already are behind the eight ball. So the system has to change. Mm. You know what? Let's this is my solution. Up. This is the thing, because we're about to run out of time with this. At the end of the day, if we can bail out banks and bail yes. out corporations and bail out, we can find this money. Everybody say, oh, I can't find the money. We don't have the money. It will bankrupt. It's just how they kind of say with reparations for black people. I said, y'all pulled this shit out of your ass. We found two trillion dollars, and then we're about to uh, write another, I think, four or five hundred billion dollars again. I'm like, so where is this money? I thought we didn't have money for this, and everybody's forgetting this money went to every American. Yes, and the money, the money, the money is there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the thing. So yeah, we. Do, this is definitely something that I think that they, if they can bail out everybody else, I think the people need to be bailed out. I think every student loan should be discharged. I do not care. If you can bail out these banks, you can bail out the people. You can find money for them, but you can't find money for us. So yep. that's just my personal opinion. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our company and product and service of today, which is Honda. Love, love, love this brand. Um, I am going to be uh, sharing a link with you guys regarding Honda. Um, and let me know when you guys can see my screen, but I will say this about Honda. Honda, um, their car is really, I mean, literally, they have some of the best cars that, that are on the market right now. I'm actually in a Honda Accord, and this is a personal story. Recently, I was driving and somebody, uh, you know, in California, it's like final destination. People just hop in front of you and just chance it, and they're like, oh, if, if I die, I die. Like, no, I'm trying to live. So, <laughs> The car has this feature on it where if it senses it's about to hit anything that says stationary, the brakes hit automatically. I don't have to do anything. And it happened. And I mean, everything in the car jerked forward and everything, but the car stopped. And so I was like, wow. I said, I just, avoid, this car just helped me avoid an accident. Um, Honda has a lot of good features on here. They have one of the best warranties in the game. Uh, Honda also uh, is ranked, I think, number one and number two in the United States of America right now. So I want to see if you guys know any Honda owners or what do you think about Honda and if you have any questions regarding Honda. Well, I'll say this. I, um, I'm very big on sexy luxury cars. I'm very big on sexy luxury cars. That's always been my platform for all cars I've ever had. However, um, I got into a car accident with my Infiniti and due to the shortness of time, I had to get another car temporarily. So I wound up getting a Honda Accord, a Honda Accord Coupe. But I will say the Honda Accord is very, is a very reliable car. Very reliable. Never had an issue. I, I personally drove a, a couple Hondas before. And, um, and I, I mean, they're just so smooth, the way that they drive, you know, they, they're in like the feel to them. I, um, I don't dislike or like the company. I'm like whatever to it. I don't, I would buy a Honda just for because they're economical as far as gas and you know the the parts and whatnot. I think that um, I'm with you on on the luxury part. I, I really like the the feel and, and look the look more than anything for the luxury cars. But I for 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 economic purposes as far as like if you have to fix it or that, but they last a very long time. Um, they have a good now. You know they're making these models that look really sexy as well, really slick, very yeah. sporty. The really Honda Accord is sexy. Yeah. The wheels, I think the wheels make it. The wheels and the color and everything yeah. makes it. And I, I'll I'll definitely say Honda is definitely definitely the car brand to go with. Now I will say one thing though. Be careful. This is not just a Honda dealership. This is at any dealership. Be careful. Going into the dealership without knowing what you want and without going through your bank or credit union, because what they're going to do, I don't care who it is, they're going to try to, they're going to do inquiries on your credit. So that stays on for two years. 
credit. They're going to do it as far as your credit. And then they're going to try to get you into all these warranties and plans and things of that nature. You need to make sure you research it before you you know buy it. I don't care what dealership it is. Because uh, I recently, when I recently got my Honda, there was a lot of issues with warranties and contracts and things of that nature. And I was just like, you know, it's just a typical thing. They're trying to get paid. And at the end of the day, once you buy the car, okay, good luck, go away. Now we got the next customer coming. Right. The next and then customer. to your point, Chris, I think also. Yeah, we're, running out, we're running out of time, though. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we will we will speak about Honda again in the future. We'll speak about Honda again in the future. And that way, you know, we can get more more in depth of the vehicle, probably get a driver's perspective of it. Um, but thanks for joining the living room for uh, season one, episode seven. Tune in to our next episode that we'll be having. Uh, discussing other uh, real topics with real people having real conversations. Have a good day. Thank you. Hi, thanks for watching The Living Room. If you like what you see, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook pages. In addition to that, if you feel like you would like to be a co-host on our show, please make sure to submit your audition tape to theliveroomtvshow.com or you can also submit it on one of our social media pages. In addition to that, make sure to submit your audition tape and the reason why you would like to be on our show. We'll see you next episode. Have a good day. This episode of The Live Room is sponsored by Juiced Up, Way Smoothies on the Go. Juiced Up is a California-based company that offers smoothies and acai bowls on the go. The company accepts deliveries and you can place your order by going to their Instagram page at Juiced Up AF or for more information regarding the products, you can go to their website at www.juicedupaf.com.